Trinity Sunday, you hear those words and your eyes sort of glaze over. It's time for a nap. This is going to be boring, right? The Holy Trinity. Obviously, nobody understands the Blessed Trinity, but it's the most important mystery of faith, the most important core belief of our church. We start life with the Blessed Trinity. Almost all of us, probably as infants, were baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Those weren't just words. When those words were said, we were inserted into the very life of the Trinity. From our childhood on, the Blessed Trinity has dwelled within us, indwelled us. It's not a feeling, it's not something we can discern, but it's the truth, the truth of our faith. So who, if you ask the question, who is God? The answer is God is Trinity. Our God is a community, a communion of love. The Catechism says an eternal exchange of love. Just think, loving but eternally. So loving for all eternity. There, there was no start. They've always loved each other. There's no end. They're always going to love each other. An eternal exchange of love. The Father loving the Son. The Son loving the Father. Their love emanating in the Holy Spirit. All three loving each other in the dynamic, perfect community of love. How do we know this? How can we say this? Because Jesus told us so. We would never have figured out the Trinity on our own. What do they say? A million monkeys on a million typewriters? Type? No. We would never have figured out that God is Trinity. It's, uh, it's uh, the result of revelation. Jesus revealed it to us. He told us, I and the Father are one. He who loves me loves the Father. He said, I always do the will of the Father. And later he said, it's better for you that I go, for if I go, I will send you the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, who will teach you everything that I have told you. So it's Jesus who told us that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this incredible mutual love of Father, Son, and Spirit is given to us. That's the overwhelming part, that it didn't just stay within the Blessed Trinity, but it's extended to us. We are, if you will, grafted in like branches on a vine. We're adopted into this dynamic community of love. That exchange we talked about, eternal exchange, we are destined to share in that exchange. Jesus told us, this, this sentence blows me over whenever I think about it. Jesus said, as much as the Father loves me, so I love you. Did you ever think, meditate on that sentence? How much does the Father love Jesus? We, we, we couldn't put it in words. But Jesus says that much, as the Father loves him, so does he love us. And then he says, remain in my love. Think of your own family. Think in your family of giving and receiving love from each other. That's the dynamic of good family life. But we do that same thing with the Trinity. We give and receive love from the Blessed Trinity as well. All of us, I would say all the time, severely underestimate the love that our God has for us. St. John tells us God is love. In other words, God defines love. We can't say, I can't say I am love. I do loving things. Sometimes I do some not so loving things. I could never say, I am love. But for God, that is who he is. It defines him. In fact, our God has loved us from all eternity. One of my favorite uh, passages in the Bible is in Ephesians chapter 1, where it says, He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Did you ever think of that? Before the world was founded, God had already chosen you was already loving you before the world was even created. So what's our response to this, to this God? Obviously it's love. God is love. 
God has loved us from all eternity. Everything God does in our life is loving. How can we respond? Only with love. It's the only thing that makes sense. Um, I always think of this. I sometimes probably shared it with you already. Somebody says, I love you. It's very hard to respond. How about those cubs? Right? Somebody says, I love you. The natural response is, I love you too. So when God says to us, I've loved you for all eternity, how can we respond? I love you too, Lord, and I want to love you more. To love God, Jesus tells us, with our whole heart and soul, our whole mind and strength. How? Again, Jesus says to us, if you love me, you will keep my commands. Much like a husband and wife are faithful to each other, so they keep that commandment of fidelity out of love for one another. So we are faithful to God. We keep his commands out of love for him. I was thinking this week about friends of mine in St. Charles. They have four kids, 8642, and they're broke. So what, they scrape what money they, they have together and they get a babysitter, at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, and they go out for a coffee date at a colonial ice cream. They just sit there for a couple hours and they catch up with each other. What's going on? What's happening? They want to keep that relationship alive. And that's how they do it. We got to do that with God every day. Have that, have that coffee date with God. Preferably every morning because we need, we need it as we go through our day. But we've, we've, got, we've got to refound that relationship with God on a daily basis or we drift away. There's a little saying I love, and I always kind of see God saying it to me. I shared it with you before, I think. But think of God saying this to you. Do you love me or do you not? You told me once, but I forgot. And it's true. It's true. He's asking us every day to refound, to reestablish, to deepen that relationship with him. What feeds that relationship? It's prayer. Just heart-to-heart -heart dialogue with God. So that every time, every day, we are spending some quality time with our Lord. Talking to Him. Being with Him. He's not some distant, anonymous force. Rather, He is our dearest friend. As with every relationship, each day we live, we're either getting closer to God or we're drifting a little further away from God. Every one of us. Every day, that's, that's the decision that we make. Think for a second on Trinity Sunday. Who do you naturally go to in prayer? Are you most comfortable with God the Father? You kind of see him as your protector, as your loving Father. Do you find yourself mostly talking to Jesus? He understands you. He's been fully human like you are, except for sin. Do you go to him? Do you go to the Holy Spirit for guidance, for wisdom? for direction. Just a, a thought for you for, the, for Trinity Sunday. In the days ahead, pray to one of the three persons that, that you don't usually go to. Expand your prayer vocabulary, expand your relationship with the Blessed Trinity. If you don't go to the Father, maybe you didn't have a, a really good relationship with your dad, whatever, pray, start praying to God the Father. Say, Father, uh, I want to let you love me and protect me. Or maybe you, you hardly ever go to the forgotten person of the Blessed Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Poor Holy Spirit, hardly anybody thinks about him. You know, start praying to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I need so much wisdom in my life. I got so many decisions to make and I don't want to make them on my own. Please help me. Start praying to the person of the Blessed Trinity that you are least likely to pray to. And let that relationship grow in your heart. And finally, be amazed. You and I talk to the Blessed Trinity. We talk to God who created the entire world, the Transcendent One, who listens to us in prayer. It's incredible. I love to look at the stars at night. There, I, I see now they're having, what do they call them, dark, dark dark night places where there's not a lot of light and you can really see the stars. I go up to Madonna House in Canada every year and it's four hours north of Toronto 
and there's nothing up there except coyotes. And uh, uh, you should see the, the night sky. And you think, look at that and say, the creator of this listens to me when I talk to him. It's overpowering. It's incredible. So what's our response to the Blessed Trinity? To grow in our knowledge of the Trinity, spend time with the Trinity, to grow in our love for the Blessed Trinity, Father, Son, Spirit. The more you know them, the more you love them. The more you love them, the more you want to get to know them. To grow in our obedience to the Trinity and to fulfill the mission that Jesus gave us in the Gospel today, go into the whole world, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's tonight close with the sign of the cross, that wonderful prayer in which we acknowledge that the Trinity is the source of our life and we invoke the protection of the Trinity in the life that we are living. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.